Hey guys and welcome back to another video. So today we will be making a compound known as sodium silicate. And we actually did this in a previous video, um, but it was actually uh, very impure because we made it from sand. And then we purified that sand um, into pure silicon dioxide uh, by first converting it to sodium silicate, then to silicic acid, then back to silicon dioxide with uh, several purification steps in between. So we have our pure silicon dioxide here and we have some sodium hydroxide. This is just known as lye crystals and can be bought from home hardware. Now upon mixing these two, um, you get, um, well, then heating them up very hot, you get the formation of sodium silicate and water, which goes off as a gas. So um, what we're going to first be doing is measuring out um, the, the silicon dioxide we have here, but I'll be saving some of it, of course. We won't use all of it. And um, I ran through the stoichiometry, and for every gram of silica pure silicon dioxide you have, you need approximately 1.33 grams of sodium hydroxide. So, we're going to weigh this out, and then multiply however, we'll probably use 20 grams of it, and then we'll multiply 20 by 1.33, um, and add that many grams of sodium hydroxide. So, uh, we will then be uh, grinding it up in a blender such as this one, uh, which is strictly for chemistry. Um, and this will just get the powders um, very finely mixed together so we get a much more uh, complete reaction when we heat these up. Now you could use a blowtorch or a gas burner or something to heat these up, but I will be using a gas burner just because it's more efficient. When you uh, grind this up together though, it is extremely important to do this outside because powdered sodium hydroxide, if it is fine enough to start going out into the air, um, as like floating around in the air and you breathe it in, it will react with the moisture in your nose and lungs and stuff and cause severe burning and horrible pain inside of you. So do not breathe this powder in. It's very important you don't do that because sodium hydroxide forms a very strong basic solution. So I'll weigh out the two ingredients and meet you back outside of course. So I actually ground it up inside but I will not open the container until we get outside just in case there is some dust um, and we don't want to breathe it in of course. Um, a good idea is to wear a dust mask or something so that this does not happen. So I ended up using 33.25 <coughs> grams of sodium hydroxide for this uh, 25 grams of silicon dioxide that we ended up using. Um, so uh, it's been ground into an extremely fine powder as clearly seen here. Um, and the reactants should be mixed very well together uh, so the reaction proceeds as e uh, um, efficiently as possible. So we must now get something such as this old baking pan here and we can put all of our uh, reactant inside of this outside and put it on a gas stove or heat it up really hot with a blowtorch. Just make sure you don't care about the pan because this will probably destroy your pan. So upon heating it a reaction will occur and I'll write up the chemical equation after we go outside. So as you can see we've concentrated all the heat on this one corner so it gets nice and hot. So we can now go ahead and take out our mixture powder here and pour it into the one spot that's nice and warm and it, the decomposition will start to begin. So we will now just leave that there to decompose and mix it around occasionally to make sure that everything reacts. And the following reaction that's happening is we're uh, taking silicon dioxide and two sodium hydroxides and reacting them to form sodium silicate and water which goes off as a gas. And uh, I just put the other O here because it came from here but it's simplified to this formula here. Anyhow, so that said, we can now just go ahead and keep mixing this until it forms a nice solid chunk. This is when we will know the reaction is practically finished. Okay, so after letting this go for five minutes or so, um, you can see it's actually started to turn green. This is made probably because we're using a uh, iron uh, crucible type thing. So um, iron impurities are co commonly present when producing sodium silicate. Even commercial grade samples can appear to be a bit green due to iron impurities. Um, but this shouldn't matter for our application because we're going to be using the sodium silicate to do a reaction known as a chemical garden, which is very cool. It's essentially where you drop transition metal salts into a solution of sodium silicate and the insoluble metal silicates precipitate out. It's very, very cool. Anyhow, so basically, um, we'll just continue to let this decompose. You can see some white chunks in there, and those just haven't decom- or, uh, sorry, not decomposed. Those uh, chunks haven't reacted yet. Uh, so you'll have to break those up. And I'm just using a simple uh, iron rod because 
Um, sodium hydroxide in, when molten will dissolve glass and we wouldn't want to ruin a glass stirring rod if you had one. Anyhow, so we'll just let this uh, react for another five minutes or so to make sure as much as reaction as possible. And um, it appears not to be hardening into a solid chunk, probably because we started with powdered um, ingredients. Uh, when I made this with sand and um, sodium hydroxide, it didn't powderize them and um, it formed a solid chunk. This is just probably mainly due to the fact that they didn't intimately mix well enough to fully react. Anyhow, so I'll just continue stirring this till it appears to be done, and then I'll take it inside. Of course, to avoid this green color, um, you could use something like a graphite crucible. I just wanted to point that out. However, if you don't have one, just use iron because honestly the impurity is rather small, and for most applications, it's not going to harm your uh, reaction at all. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to point that out quickly. Okay, so I brought it inside, crumbled it up, put it in this beaker, and added 250 milliliters of very warm water to completely dissolve everything. And there is a bit of powder left at the bottom, but that's just unreacted silicon dioxide, which is insoluble in water. Um, all the sodium silicate dissolved. At room temperature wa um, water, sodium silicate is only soluble to 22 grams per 100 milliliters. However, at um, temperatures closer to 100, it's actually way up actually at um, 160 grams per 100 milliliters of water. So by using hot water, we make sure that we dissolve all of it. And 250 milliliters is a way excess of hot water. So we definitely dissolved any soluble sodium silicate. And anything that's left over is definitely unreacted silicon dioxide. So a simple filtration will get rid of all of that unwanted um, uh, silicon dioxide. And uh, we'll be left with our solution, which we can reboil down to get the crystals. And you can see it is a rather prominent green color, the solution, due to iron impurities. So I'll filter everything, then be back. So we just thought of this, but if you were to instead take the solution, um, or actually uh, rather take the uh, silicon dioxide and make a solution of the sodium hydroxide, and then add the silicon um uh, silicon dioxide to the solution of sodium hydroxide and just heat a uh, concentrated solution of sodium hydroxide and just heat it up for a while um, eventually all the silicon dioxide would react and um, if you, you did this in glass you wouldn't actually get this uh, nasty green impurity color although it's actually much less green than is appearing on camera the camera just makes it look a lot more green um, but that would eliminate your iron issue or of course if you had graphite crucible I chose the way to uh, just react them as solids because it's much quicker. It only took 10 minutes opposed to probably several hours to actually react it in an aqueous solution. Anyhow, so you can see that there's that little bit of uh, uh, silicon dioxide at the bottom which never reacted, and then of course our solution of um, sodium silicate. So I'll rinse out this beaker, transfer the solution of sodium silicate to the beaker, and we'll boil it down to reobtain the crystals. Okay, so already our solution is starting to look much less green, as you can clearly see. Um, this is most likely because um, I believe the compound that we formed, um, which gave us our iron impurity, is actually iron hydroxide. Um, most likely the uh, rust, which is iron oxide, and possibly some iron chloride from previous experiments on that pan. Um, what happened was it reacted with the sodium hydroxide, forming... Um, iron hydroxide and sodium chloride and sodium oxide depending on what it is um, what the compound was anyhow so this uh, solution that's why it contained lots of iron hydroxide uh, well actually not lots but um, it only you only need a bit dissolved into solution to give a very strong color with iron hydroxide it's soluble only in say, I believe 0 0.27 grams per hundred milliliters um, and the solubility does increase a bit as your um, temperature rises. And because we use so much water, um, it, it will all dissolve, giving us that color. However, as our solution cooled, I noticed a precipitant forming. This was most likely the iron hydroxide, and there was barely any. So I filtered once again, just to get rid of that, and it's much clearer. So we should actually be able to do a recrystallization of this um, to further purify our sodium silicate. Now to do this, first what we must do is boil our solution down and then weigh the crystal. So we'll do that. Or uh, alternatively, you could just keep boiling your solution till it's extremely saturated. Um, and y it becomes quite viscous when it's saturated. I'll show you what it looks like, uh, depending on which method we use. So we'll take this outside and now start heating up very hot. Okay, so I boiled down the solution 100%. Um, except that halfway through, actually, a lot of precipitant formed, which appeared to be a 
ugly blackish green color. I'm assuming this was most of the impurity, so I simply did a hot filtration and filtered it off. I then boiled it all the way down, removed it from this beaker, put it in the blender, and powdered it, and put it back in the beaker. Now, at this point, it's extremely white. Like, look at that. That looks really nice and white. However, there's still most likely some sodium hydroxide contamination, as I noticed that when we first filtered the mi uh, mixture in the first step, there was some undissolved silicon dioxide, which means that we have sodium hydroxide present because it didn't react. So, to get rid of that, we can actually use ethanol. So, I have a fair amount of ethanol there, and that's just 95% uh, pure alcohol, um, which is ethanol. And what is nice about ethanol is that sodium silicate is very soluble in ethanol, or, or sorry, not soluble in ethanol at all, except that uh, sodium hydroxide is actually quite soluble in ethanol. So, by adding some ethanol to this, we can dissolve out the sodium hydroxide and leave the sodium silicate behind. And um, so, and then we can of course filter off our sodium silicate. So, we'll add some of this very pure ethanol. And now we must mix it around very well to make sure that as much dissolves as possible. You must powderize this, of course, because if you do not powderize your um, product, it will not be fine enough to actually dissolve all the uh, sodium hydroxide and the ethanol. So I'll mix it around, and then I'll meet you back. Okay, so after mixing that around for about five minutes, if we look inside, you can see that there's a clear layer on the bottom, which has not been affected at all by the ethanol. And you can see that uh, the ethanol is actually totally clear. This is wonderful. That means that all of our sodium hydroxide is now dissolved into the ethanol, and that all of the um, uh, silicon, uh, sodium silicate, sorry, is um, just there as a very pure substance. So we must now filter it, and that will save the ethanol for future distillation runs to get rid of the sodium hydroxide so that it can recover the ethanol. Um, so we'll go ahead and set up for simple filtration. Okay, so you can see that we simply um, after filtering it off, we just put it on this coffee filter on some paper towel to finish drying. And I've just put the ethanol in uh, my ethanol waste container for um, uh, a fractional distillation in the future to recover the ethanol because I don't want to just go around wasting it. So we'll evaporate the rest of the ethanol from this uh, mixture here until it's nice and dry. So we'll meet you back when it's nice and dry and that should be our pure product. So I'll show you what it looks like and our exact percent yield in a moment. Okay, so after that, I uh, simply let as much ethanol evaporate as possible, then put it in this baking pan to dr drive off residual ethanol and water. And I put it in the oven at 350 degrees. So it's nice and dry now, and you can see we're left with this nice white substance, which is our sodium silicate. So our percent yield was 81%. We got 34 grams of sodium silicate from that, which the expected yield was 42 grams. Our did I say 38? I meant 34 grams of sodium silicate, and our expected yield was 42. So we lost 8 grams somewhere in the process, and my, I, I know that we lost a bit during that washing with the ethanol, because uh, that ethanol was only 95% pure, so there was still 5% water, so some of our sodium silicate would have dissolved into that water. But it's such a ne negligible amount that um, I'm happy with our nice pure source. So we'll be using this to uh, make the chemical garden experiment. Um, and uh, yeah, that's basically how to make pure sodium silicate from uh, silicon dioxide and sodium hydroxide. So, hope you guys enjoyed. Wait, bye.